Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics, and today we're looking through the crosshairs at Scope in Python. In programming, the scope of a name defines the area of a program where you can unambiguously access that name. Name, in this case, means variables, functions, objects, or classes. A name will only be visible to and accessible by the code if it is within the scope. A name can also be referred to as an identifier or a namespace. Namespace is a system Python uses to have a unique name for every variable or method within Python. Python itself maintains the namespaces in the form of a Python dictionary. Now, let me take you back in history. Before there was scope, it was only global names. This meant any part of the program could modify any variable at any time. And this is how it was for many early programming languages, such as BASIC, the greatest disadvantage of this was when creating a large programs, it became critical that each and every variable had a unique name. If not, major problems would occur as parts of the software start to interact in ways not planned. Thus, the programmer would have to remember every variable which would eventually become just impossible as codes become increasingly larger. Back in the modern world, most programming languages use scope to avoid this. Scope prevents you from accessing all the variables in a program at all locations in that program. So for Python, the ability for a code to access a given name will depend on where exactly that name has been defined. When you can access the values of a given name from your code, this will mean the name is in the scope. If you cannot access the name, this will mean the name is out of the scope. At any point during the execution of your code, there will be a maximum of four Python scope levels. These are local, enclosing, global, and built-in. So, built-in scope. This is a special Python scope that is created whenever any script is running or a window with an interactive programming is active. A window with interactive programming means it is constantly undergoing a read, evaluate, and print cycle. The Python idle shell is an example of one of these. After entering a line of code, the result is fed back straight away. Global scope. This is also referred to as module scope. This is a top scope within Python programming language. This scope contains all the names that you have defined at the top level of a program or module. Names in this scope can thus be accessed from everywhere inside your scripts. Local scope. This is also referred to as the function scope. This scope contains all the names that you have defined inside a function. These names are only visible from the code of the function. This scope is created only when the function is called. Many local scopes can exist simultaneously and each time a function is called, a new local scope is made. Even if it is the same function being called again, a new local scope will be created. Now, worth noting, the Lambda keyword also creates a local scope when executed in code. Enclosed scope. This is also referred to as non-local scope. This is a special scope that exists only for nested functions. A nested function is a function which is defined within another function. The outer function is the enclosed function. Python has a procedure which it will always follow to look up names. First, it will look through all the names in the local scope, then the enclosing scope, then the global scope, and then finally the built-in scope. Jumping into the computer, you can see a great image found at the Core Electronics website tutorial page detailing just this. Now, if we go further down, there are a number of key details about these scopes. For example, which scopes can alter variables in another scope's level. So this table is a great reference point for scope understanding. Now, also worth noting, to declare code as global or non-local, which you'll see in this table, you use the keywords global and non-local respectively. Now, I'll go through a number of script examples which will further clarify scope. Some of these scripts will work and some will cause Python error messages to appear. I'm doing this to demonstrate the effects that different scopes have on your Python scripts. Starting off, I'll introduce you how to use the global keyword. So by default, a function cannot modify a global variable. This you can learn from in the table from before. So jumping into the computer, we can see a script trying to do just that. Here's a variable created at the global scope and here is a function created, and this function is trying to edit or modify that variable. So 
If I run the code and then use the idle shell to call this function, then an error will occur. This is because call function is a function at a local scope, which is trying to modify a variable which is made at the global scope level. Now, if I alter this code just a little bit by utilizing the global keyword. Now that this is done, the local scope can modify the variable A, which exists in the global scope. So in this example, the modification is adding two to the initial value of A. So once the script is run, and then once the calling environment calls for this function, the value three will be printed back to the calling environment, which I'll demonstrate right now. Neat. So the next script we can look at is in the computer now, and it has two functions, one nested inside the other. When this code is run and the calling environment calls the external function, three things are attempting to be printed to the calling environment. This is two hello statements from both the internal and external function and a number. This number started life as a variable created inside the external function. An attempt is made to modify that variable created in the outer function by using code from the inner nested function. From the table, we can see that this cannot happen. So let me run this code anyway and call the function. As you can see, a Python error occurs. Now, if I alter this code just a little bit by utilizing the non-local keyword, Doing this for the nested function, the variable A has now been defined as non-local. So this means that the variable which lives inside their enclosing scope can now be modified. The modification occurring to the variable A is adding two to the initial value. So once the script is run, and then once the calling environment calls for this function, the value three will be printed back to the calling environment, as well as the two hello statements. which I will do right now. Neat, nice, congratulations, done, and it worked. And that's it. The online write-up for this guide has a couple of extra scripts worth looking at to fully flesh out your understanding of scope. And until next time, stay cozy.